Welcome again to Go Open, the only program in the world still only dedicated to open source. What is open source? Watch us and you'll find out. When will people catch on? I don't know, but hopefully they'll realize soon it's the hottest thing. Today, we'll be looking at VOIP, that's Voice Over Internet Protocol, which is where you use the internet to make phone calls instead of the people that you normally use to make the phone calls who we can't mention um, because we can't. But it rhymes with Velcom. Later on in the program, we're giving away some fantastic prizes. DVD writers, computer monitors, um, all sorts of stuff, including clothing. Uh, there will be clues in the program, so pay attention uh, if you, if you, it's the right thing to do, really. Open source software exists as a result of the combined efforts of millions of computer programmers, users and software vendors from around the world. They share their intellectual property freely, and they believe that software should cost nothing and should enrich the lives of users. Open source software is the alternative and biggest challenger to closed source or proprietary software. It generally costs the user nothing. It can be distributed freely to anyone. Download it, use it, modify it, and give it away. It's a whole new world. Open source is the future of computing. The internet. It's like a huge web, a stretchy web that stretches all over the world, connecting computers and of course thereby connecting people. So why shouldn't we use it to make phone calls? No, I'm really, I'm asking you. Ah, never mind. In a few weeks' time, even our legislation will change and the whole VOIP thing is going to be everywhere, literally. Technological development in the last century has been spurred on by increasingly improved communication. From the internet to the cell phone, our ability to talk to each other has fueled innovation and helped businesses grow from local to global. The technological world has been described as a global village, but there are still some barriers to be overcome. Communication, for one, is the lifeblood of business, and yet those international calls are still extremely expensive. But that is all about to change, since the Minister for Telecommunications, Dr. Ivy Mazepe Kasaburi, announced the deregulation of the telecommunications sector, effectively paving the way for South Africa to join the rest of the world in what is fast becoming the greatest revolution since the Internet itself. It's called Voice Over IP. In its simplest form, you can use a sound card and a headset with a microphone to let your internet connection replace the phone line. Dedicated software uses the computer's sound card to convert the sound to digital packets, which are sent over the internet to someone with compatible software on the other end, thus saving on international or even national call costs. But there's nothing new about this technology, according to Mokul Thienissen of the University of Pretoria Department of Computer Science. The current situation in the telecommunication industry is that most of the, the back-end network is already IP-based. It's only the last multi-house that, house that's usually um, this telecommunication circuit switch still. And now taking that into your home, you'll be able to do a lot more stuff. So you'll be able to use the same line to do concurrently your telephone calls, your fax, your data, internet connection, and so on. As technology becomes more ubiquitous and bandwidth becomes more available, the next stage will be to integrate the internet protocol equipment with existing telephone networks, according to value-added network service providers, Molo Africa. You can use it to start right out from a small company with two incoming lines from Telcom and four extensions to replace the traditional little PAVX that you would have had in the corner by a PC running Linux that can now take these incoming calls and route it out to the extensions and allow these extensions to place outbound calls. But then with all the fancy features that go with that, such as music on hold or voicemail or least cost routing when you want to route outbound calls directly to the cellular operators, and then pretty sophisticated and advanced functions such as an auto attendant where you get the lady saying, please press one for sales, two for marketing, whatever. Um, and finally, even a conference bridge. So you can have this sort of uh, system where incoming calls can all be joined together in one conference and people don't have to travel to attend meetings. But this doesn't mean that the next generation of telephony will keep you tied to your PC. Mono Africa have produced an adapter that turns a standard telephone into an internet-enabled device so that you can run a conversation from this regular old telephone here over the Ethernet LAN as an IP conversation. Behind all this runs an affordable open source tool called Asterisk. It's a version of Linux that has been developed to provide a range of IP telephony services. It's one unified platform that serves as the basis 
for several different applications that can be built on top of it. Services such as interactive voice response, conferencing, call center functionality. But the IP system wasn't designed to handle voice and video. When sending a data file via a network, it gets broken up into manageable data packets, which arrive at different times, and the system reassembles it on the receiving end. But if we were to do this to voice, it would sound something like this. Hello? I'd like to expect a really expensive buy computer, please. Packets need to be in sequence, arrive at the user, so that the voice call is uh, recognizable to the end user. And that's why you have a carrier grade um, standard of implementing the network layer. Both telephone and IP networks have traditionally been cable-based, but now an opportunity exists for developing countries in Africa to leapfrog technology by implementing wireless networking, which can be a great deal less expensive and more accessible. Providing internet access there is simple through wireless technologies, and once you've got the wireless data connectivity, which is already happening right now, it's pretty simple to just run voice over that, and therefore that will really make voice telecommunications very accessible, very inexpensive, and very widely available. So the world's changing and open source is a big part of that. So let's talk to Eric Raymond, the author of The Cathedral and the Bazaar, considered by many to be the Bible of the open source movement. Eric, welcome to the show. We here in Africa are pioneering the open source movement. How was it for you as a pioneer all those years ago? It just felt like something I had to do. Uh, I was tired of watching my people lose. Why were they losing? Because they didn't know how to market. They didn't know how to take the idea of open source software to the mainstream and make it persuasive to business people, to the press, to the mainstream culture. And it was about time somebody took that on. Why do you so believe in the free and open software movement? Because I've learned from experience over the last quarter century that keeping secrets is a bad idea when you're developing software. Software that kept, that's kept secret doesn't get sufficient peer review, it doesn't get sufficient scrutiny, and bugs lurk in it forever. You were instrumental in getting Netscape to release their source code. Can you uh, just tell us a bit more about that story? I was sitting at my machine hacking on something, and I got email from somebody who I, I never, I'd never heard from before and pointed me at a web page, which was a Netscape press release, and he said, they mention your name. And so I wrote him back email saying I was yeah, this does look like somebody's been reading my papers. And I guess I should call Netscape and find out what's going on. So I, I realized at that point that fame was about to land on me, and I wasn't sure I was ready for that. The CEO had been briefing the national press about their, their new uh, strategy of openness and had attributed to my work, and that meant the press was going to come calling. And I had to think a lot about whether I, I, I wanted to take that on or duck back into a hole. Uh, I decided to take it on, and that's why I'm talking to you today. Tell us about your life as a hacker. I should explain that anybody who tells you that a hacker is somebody who breaks into computers is talking through their hat. This is nonsense. True hackers are programming enthusiasts. They are, they are people who, who love to build and improve software systems, and true hackers are the culture that gave you the Internet and the World Wide Web. Uh, and I became involved in that culture uh, in, I guess, around 1976, when it wasn't even the Internet yet. It was the old ARPANET. Uh, and um, I continued to be part of that culture and write code and share code and communicate with people and solve problems. Uh, I've been in it for more than 25 years now. Coming up later in the show, we meet someone who had his life changed by open source. Oh, and Mark Shuttleworth will also be around to talk about a program that keeps people chatting all around the world. Of course, there are also prizes to be won, and we are putting the whole program on DVD. But not only that, we're also going to put together a package that includes some things, backstage things, things you shouldn't have seen, things you didn't see, and things we didn't even know that were being filmed. And I really wasn't the person in that film. It was, it was actually done by the GIMP. Uh, go to goopensource.org for more info. Very exciting. Back after this break. Wow. Open source really is changing people's lives, some rapidly and some more profoundly but over time. Take for example the uh, story of Solly Masinga, who was a packer and now he's a hacker. 
What does a young man have to do to get singled out for special mention by Thabo Mbeki, the president of South Africa? And you'll be able to change your life for the better. Solly Masinga is a full-time employee at the HPI Community Centre in Limpopo. But just a year and a half ago, he was a fresh-faced volunteer when he offered to unpack dozens of new computers that had just arrived for the new centre. We started unpacking the boxes together and from there started loading the computers. He said I've got 100 computers in the storeroom and we need to prepare the computers. His supervisor, Yunus Hassan, was bowled over by his enthusiasm. Soli came in as a temp initially for a week and after that we decided, that's myself and Soli, that he should stay on here because it had great potential for him. Knowing that Soli had some prior knowledge of computers, Eunice felt that the young man would easily rise to the challenge of installing new operating systems on the very computers he had just unpacked. The operating system was Red Hat Linux, something completely new to Soli. Operating system was it? It said Linux. I said, oh, it's my first time I see this. The HPI Community Centre aims to create self-sustaining projects like the call centre training and development venture. Because it brings technology to the community, people like Solly have been able to expand their knowledge rapidly, according to Mushema Fisa, Solly's boss. The perfect example is Solly, who had no prior knowledge of open source, who had no prior knowledge of networking. Now he's a master in open source. Now he can set up wireless networks, you know, he can set up a server. So yeah, it's endless. The local municipality approached the I Community Centre for help with a special project. They needed a wireless network to be installed for their computer system. The person chosen for the job? Solly Masinga. And nowadays his duties extend further afield. I'm responsible for, for the testing and the first line technical support of the, the 441 and also the customization of the 441. The 441 is a system designed by HP, which is basically a computer that can be used simultaneously by four people. Solly has been chosen as one of the key members of the development team. Even when you say, you know, let's go sleep, it's now late. We go, we go to bed, he'll also be still studying, you know, looking for references and researching on whatever we've had a problem solving. So yeah, he's, he's just amazing. The project is here, not to measure, the power of technology, but to change the people's life in a positive way. Hard work, an aptitude for computers, and the will to succeed. These are just some of the factors that brought Soli Masinga onto the same podium as the president. That concludes our speech. Thank you very much. Amazing what someone with determination and the right tools can do. As they say in Cape Town, well, we've taken a look at voice over IP and how it's changing the face of telecommunications here and overseas. Uh, I now have here with me in the studio someone who's helped to develop one of those very systems, one called Ilunga. Uh, I have Jason Penton in the studio. Jason, you won a prize for some innovative work that you did. Uh, what we did was we, we took our system and we entered into uh, the National Innovation Fund competition. Uh, we entered into the roads, uh, the road section and we won it. Uh, the, the system itself is called Ilanga, which is a, um, a, a system that we're using to switch tele telephone calls using a, a basic computer. We have a, a command center which you can control your entire communications portfolio from your computer. Uh, so if you're in the office, you can simply drag your cell phone uh, into, into a specific box and it will ring when your extension's dialed or move it back if you don't want it to ring or move all your devices into the unavailable devices. and. If someone phones you, it'll go straight to voicemail because you typically don't want to call. So you have this, this nice innovative way of controlling how the system works for you as opposed to you sort of molding yourself around some system that's been designed. You're working on it, Rose, um, developing uh, open source stuff, particularly um, voice over internet protocol. Voice over IP, yeah. There we go. Um, tell us a bit about it. Well, basically, voice over IP is carrying uh, voice over the internet or any data network for that matter. And what we're doing at Rhodes is building a communications platform which runs on a, on a standard computer, um, which will be able to route calls to wherever you are in the world. Now what we're doing is we're putting this whole system onto a, a standard desktop computer where you can run the entire system and do exactly the same sort of functionality for a lot less uh, cost. Okay. Um, this is all using open source components, of course. So where do you guys make money? Again, from the support. Uh, this, the, the main system you'll have to buy, obviously, as a, as a 
a, a computer in itself, there is hardware to uh, integrate to the existing system. So what you have to do in, the, in this roadmap to the future of the next generation telecommunication network is bridge the two environments together. And uh, the way we do this is we use specialized hardware so that we can still interoperate with the existing system. So we can make a call from our computer uh, to, to the normal conventional network, to the cell, to the cell networks, um, as easily as you would as if you were on the, on the legacy system all the time. Right, don't go away. Uh, we're going to have a quick break because we need to get Mark ready to talk uh, all about game, which we assure you will love because it's a new kind of game, not a game that you know. And he got game, that Mark. Right, welcome back. The most wealthy tent you've ever met is now ready and standing by to let you in on the world of chatting uh, using your computer. Not chatting up your computer. Give it up for Marky. E. Today we're looking at one of the best pieces of open source chat software available. It's called Game and it supports almost any kind of internet chat or instant messaging protocol. It supports Yahoo, AOL, Jabba, IRC, uh, ICQ, any kind of protocol that you can imagine. You can speak instantly to anybody. The icon in your buddy list shows you which chat protocol they belong to and they can be grouped according to your needs. You can create a new chat account for yourself from the game interface, supply a unique nickname, password and within seconds you can be chatting on all these networks and even exchanging files and photos. Game can also be extended to be used as a voiceover IP phone. I use GAME every single day. That's how I stay in constant contact with people here in South Africa, in the States, in Australia, in Asia. That's how we tie a small team of people who are working in every single time zone together to work as one team. You can download GAME free of charge from the GAME website. It's also on the free Go Open Source CD. Look forward to seeing you next week. If you're looking for any information, any questions about this program or any of the previous ones you've seen, please go to our website. All the answers are there at www .goopensource.org. Come on, join the revolution. Format your hard drive and install Linux. You know you want to, it won't do anything to you. All the cool kids are doing it. In order for a computer to function, it requires three things. The hardware, the software that runs on the desktop, and an operating system which allows the software and the hardware to communicate with each other. Ubuntu Linux is a free and open source operating system developed by Canonical, which is a Mark Shuttleworth initiative. Late last year, Mark launched his new Linux distribution known as Ubuntu for the first time in South Africa, when he presented it to the media and the computer industry. We asked him how well it had been received. Globally, there's been a tremendous response to the release of Ubuntu. And uh, within a month, we were number three on the global charts. So the community seems to have responded very well, and I hope that the South African business community and press will, uh, will enjoy it as well. Mark, I believe with Ubuntu, if you phone a number or log onto a website, you can get it delivered to you for free. Is that true? We've had tremendous requests. We've had uh, 340 odd thousand CDs printed and requested to be shipped around the world, which is uh, extraordinary. We've committed to making Ubuntu absolutely freely available with, without restrictions. What kind of target market are you approaching? Um, I think the time is right for open source to step into the home and into the small office and into the, the, the corporate um, and on the desktop. What makes Ubuntu different to other distros? While this is a fully commercially supported distribution, it, all of the software applications are absolutely open source software. And the, 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 the packaging includes two CDs, one which you could use to install um, a complete Linux environment on, on a new PC, so it becomes the only software running on that PC, and then also a live CD um, which you can boot off on a Windows PC and experience Linux, or which if you install on a Windows PC will actually give you a bunch of open source applications for Windows. Ubuntu comes bundled with a complete office suite and internet applications like mail and browser. The server versions of these are also included for any companies wanting to build their infrastructure. Now, I know we don't like to discuss licenses per se on this particular program, but there is one license you'd like to get, and that is the International Computer Drivers License, which is very exciting, and uh, you can get it at icdl.org.za, and you too can drink in hard drive. Glig, 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 glig. Rafile will be in attendance momentarily with some fascinating websites for your earnest perusal. A lot of people have been asking us about open source software that runs on the Windows platform. Well, lo and behold, if you surf to the opencd.sunsite.dk, you'll find the answer. 
This site offers a selection of high quality, free and open source software that covers pretty much any task you can think of, from word processing to presentations to email. All of the software has been tested for stability and the site owners only choose stuff that's suitable for a wider audience. You can order a copy of the CD locally if you call 0860-GO-OPEN. That's 0860-466-736. If Red Hat's AMD's 64-bit compatibility technology or Zimian's No 2.0 desktop sounds like Greek to you, you're probably not yet a computer nerd. But if you want to learn more, bookmark slashdot.org right away and join one of the biggest community-regulated news sources on the internet. Return to the site regularly to read, submit, and comment on hundreds of daily submissions. And if you're looking for software, the first port of call is freshmeat.net. Seriously, pretty much every piece of open source software known to geek kind is meticulously catalogued in the Freshmeat database. Links to new applications are added daily, and each entry gives you a description of the software, links to download it, and a history of each project. To recap, the opencd.sunsite.dk is where you should head if you're keen to run open source software on your Windows platform. Slashdot.org is where you go to teach yourself how to be an open source fundi. And if you don't want to be roadkill on the information superhighway, freshmeat.net is your one-stop shop for free and open source software. This is everyone's favorite time in the program. It's the competition time, basically because we give away things for absolutely nothing, except asking that you answer a little question and you can win some fantastic prizes. This week, once again, we're giving away a PhotoSmart digital camera, a color printer bundle, that's from HP, two DVD writers and a 17 inch flat screen PC monitor from LG and some 1000 Rand clothing vouchers from Soviet. Here's this week's question. Did Eric Raymond write A, the open source guide to the bazaar, B, hacking for dummies, C, the cathedral, and the bazaar. Is it A, B, or C? Please SMS one of those letters in response uh, with your name to 34357. I remember that SMSs are charged at two rand a pop. And the winners of last week's competition are... Peter Ullerman, who wins a 17-inch LG flat screen monitor. Nick Collar and Justin Kramer each get an LG DVD writer. Justice Mamani and Temba Bongane each win a thousand rand Soviet voucher. And the HP digital camera and printer bundle goes to Pritavan Naidu. Next week, join us when we find out about two young men whose search engine made them incredibly wealthy. How wealthy? Wealthier than this. What's this? It's an arms deal. Also, we have a lovely feature on e-commerce, which is basically a Zulu word uh, for business. So until then, stay healthy, stay open, and stay wise. But then again, how dare we tell you how to live your life. Do whatever you like. Just be here next week. Good night.